question I get asked a lot is, hey Aaron, why do you play retro games so much? Why do you stick to these old consoles when nowadays there's DLC, there's better, there's better gameplay, the, the graphics look better, the sound looks better. Why do you stick to these old systems? And normally I can't give an answer within a few seconds, so here's my answer. You know, when you, when you pick up a console or a controller or, or a video game, you, you can just hold it and instantly you just flooded with memories of playing those with your cousins, your brothers, your sisters, and my grandparents even, and of course all of them, pretty much all of my family as we were all pretty much heavy gamers when we were all growing up. First off, nostalgia. I, I love playing games I grew up in my childhood that have a lot of fond memories. So every time I pick up a game that I grew up playing, it kind of throws me back to growing up in elementary school, middle school, high school, etc. I was fortunate enough to, to be born in probably the best time in gaming, um, when gaming really took the world by storm. I mean, sure, yeah, you had Atari, you had television, and it had its markets, and it became part, quite popular, but it wasn't really until Nintendo came along, and, and, I, and, and I, I just, I love, I love that time in my life where I just got swept up into all that. It was just an amazing time for me. And and nowadays it's like, you know, you go through life and you, you go through your ups and your downs and all that. I'll always have retro gaming as an anchor to that perfect time in my childhood where everything was just so magical and great. It's what I do. I go to Crunk Craigslist, check every day, go to swap meets. It just brings back like that little piece of what you had back in the day. I mean, come on, who doesn't remember playing Contra, Super Mario 3? Dude, that was epic. Even at like nine years old, trying to relive the memories of watching my mom play Pitfall when I was three. Because at nine I would go around to garage sales and look around, ask the neighborhood kids if they had an Atari 2600, and I was just trying to find one just to relive those memories. Retro gaming basically just means a simpler time when games were simpler, life was simpler, there wasn't a complexity of life and complexity of a thousand buttons on a controller. You could just sit down on the couch, bag of chips, play some games. Retro gaming is just superb. I love immersing myself in nostalgia and tucking into a game that I've never ever heard of. So when I was a kid, one Christmas morning, I remember waking up as every other ch child did around Christmas time to open up a brand new video game system. And even though I'm in my 20s now, our family was poor, so we were always a couple generations behind or a generation behind, but we got a Super Nintendo. And I remember my parents got us Mario Paint. And one of the first things we did is we, we put the game in as fast as we could and my brother discovered the animator right away, which not a lot of people really, that was the first thing they went to, but he decided to start animating it, and one of the first things he made was a car actually over and over running me over with blood squirting out. And I remember my mom looking over my shoulder and looking over his shoulder just looking at us like, what have you guys done? <laughs> Doesn't sound so funny nowadays though. If I think back, one of the earliest memories I can remember is me watching my mom play the Atari 2600 and it was Pitfall. And we had the wood grain system too. And just even today, if I hear those noises, like the jump noise, the bram bram over the logs or the gaps, or even jumping on the vine and you have done na 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 that game is so nostalgic just for that reason. When Nintendo came out, it was like I had to get a Nintendo. When the Super Nintendo came out, I had to get a Super Nintendo. And it was it was that was it for me. I mean that's all I really wanted to do was play games. That's all I cared about. I, it was like the outside world where I used to go out and play. That was just gone. It was completely shut off. It was inside playing video games now. My cousins and myself, we grew up together ar around my grandparents a lot. And they had a Magnavox Odyssey 2. Uh, here in Europe, it was known as the Philips Video Pack G7000. Odyssey. Video game fun. Computer keyboard challenge. The entrance to an alternate world of fire-breathing dragons. They had quite a few games for that system 
Uh, I think they've had about 10 and they had some loose cartridges and uh, some special boxes. I always remember them being tucked away in the cupboard in the corner. But there was one game in particular I always remember we played the, a lot. And it was a Pac-Man clone, I suppose, at the time. And it was called Munchkin. It was similar mazes and go around collecting the... Uh, the munchies, I think you had to eat the munchies, it was a really cute setting of a game, but I thought it was really amazing. Some of my favourite memories as a child are of me playing games. Uh, spending time with my grandparents, you know, um, my grandfather's not with me anymore, but I would go to his house and I would play, you know, games like Ninja Turtles and Ninja Turtles 2 and the Mega Man series and I distinctly remember these times where I'd be eating nachos and playing Ninja Turtles and I'd have the volume up really really loud and and, and he'd be pounding on the wall pump 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 from the bedroom you know because he'd be trying to sleep and I'd be in the living room just blaring away at Nintendo and um, and then you know I didn't so I didn't hear him so I, you know, it's 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 happy memories like that, and it's it's memories like that 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 keep retro games a, a, in a special place in my heart. I actually remember for the very first time seeing a Mega Man game. I went to my next door neighbor's house, and he was just this little kid. I I didn't even he was like five years younger than me, but he put in Mega Man Two, and I'd never seen it before. And it was just so captivating. I remember the Flash Man stage was the first stage I ever saw. And ever since then, I had to get it. My grandma ended up buying it for me for Christmas, and I've probably played it a hundred times since then, all the way through. Yeah, graphics are, are great, uh, but they're not the determining factor if it's a good game or not. A uh, game could have really poor graphics. You look at the original Super Mario Brothers, uh, looking back on the graphics aren't great, but the gameplay is there. The, the story is there. Uh, the nostalgia value is there. You can't beat some of the music from those 8-bit and 16-bit generations. I mean, you put on any Mega Man soundtrack and you'll just be rocking out. And the, I'm telling you, like the UN Squadron soundtrack, Best soundtrack, like in my opinion, that is the best soundtrack of any game on any 16-bit system. And the music from that game is incredible. And I think, Aaron, you've even said this before, that whenever you hear that music, it makes you stop and just think about where you were in Final Fantasy III. Whether it's walking through the open world, or getting in a fight, or Kefka, or the poisoning of the wells. When it comes to like music and stuff with retro gaming, how could you not like picture Mega Man 2? How awesome is that intro? Super fighting robot. When you collect coins, for example, in Sonic the Hedgehog, everyone who's played that game and grew up playing that game recognizes that that tone you get when you click coins. Retro consoles did a really good job of startup screens when you first put in a game and press power and turn the game on. I know Super Nintendo had that, that little ding noise on like the Mario games, um, the Sega Genesis, the Sega Master System, everybody knows the whole Sega! Sega! The, the PS1 startup screen is very beautiful and it was the first time I remember hearing super crisp sounds come out of a video game console. I know as opposed to like the Super Nintendo, the sounds were super warm, which uh, personally I like better. Honestly, what caught me off off guard was I remember when Donkey Kong came out, how great those graphics were. My dude, I still thought Donkey Kong graphics were better than N64, believe it or not. I, uh, I don't know. That's what I thought. I know most people probably talk about Super Nintendo. Some of the music on Super Nintendo. The Super Nintendo. And the music in Donkey Kong. The UN Squadron soundtrack. The Legend of Zelda links the past on Super Nintendo. Ba, 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 ba. 
But if you think about the NES, the graphics and sound of the NES, while great, they greatly expanded when the Super Nintendo came out. And then when the Nintendo 64 came out, it was kind of a letdown in a way. It kind of seemed to go backward in some ways. So Super Nintendo sort of stands out as a peak among valleys. And so I think of games like, of course, Super Metroid. The atmospheric music in Super Metroid. When you're in a cavern, you feel like you're in a cavern. When you're in some uh, lush, overgrown vegetation area, it feels like you're in the lush, overgrown vegetation area. The music just so well fits the game. And uh, I think of, graphically, the little subtle nuances of something like A Link to the Past. That music, the, the Hyrule, the, the castles, um, the music, the title screen is It's one of those things where you can hear it anywhere, anytime, and right there you're taken back into your, your childhood state and you feel the same feeling you did when you first put in the game and you just remember, you know, if you had brothers or family looking, playing with you, just like, this is it, let's go, this is a big journey that we're about to set on. A Link's Awakening, Link's Awakening on the Game Boy as well, that is beautiful, that intro, ah, oh, it's just incredible, before you even start playing the game, you Hairs are standing on end, you've got goosebumps. Ah, well, it just brings out the sense of adventure and you just want to dive straight in. I could actually just sit there on the main menu listening to that tune all day long. It is just brilliant. Some of the music from F Zero is incredible. I mean, whenever you hear that, People in general are like, oh, that's some great chip tunes, that's amazing music. And the music in Donkey Kong, honestly, oh, just that, the one song that I can't get out of my head is the best one, it's the water level, for the love of God. Aaron knows the name, but I can't think of it right now. Aquatic ambience. <laughs> there it is. That's definitely Super Mario. Or Super Mario. <laughs> I love Mega Man, isn't he so cute? Look at that little scruffy hair. Don't you just run your fingers through his hair, his robotic hair? But Mega Man 2 is probably the most nostalgic for me because I got so far that I got to the Wily stages and as a kid, when I have two older brothers that always would just kick me off the system whenever they wanted to play, this was quite a feat. And another favorite character is Strider. Even though he makes kind of a strange face on this box, I always liked Strider because he's sliding around, using his sight for sword, cutting things up. He's just awesome. The first actual video games console was a Super Nintendo. Mum um, and Dad actually gave it to me um, when it first came out. I think it was 92 when it first was launched here in the UK. And of course it came with Super Mario World. Super Mario World. It comes only as part of the system you were created for. The Super Nintendo Entertainment System. The next generation from Nintendo. Now you're playing with power. Super power. And that was the very first time I actually played um, a Super Mario game. Um, but from then on, I've, I've, I've collected nearly every game he's ever been in, and uh, I literally cannot get enough of him. He's awesome. Yeah, I like Mario. It's a me, Mario. I, I really love Luigi. I think he does. He gets kind of pushed in the shadow. He's behind his brother Mario. Uh, people kind of push him aside. He gets to play second fiddle with Mario. Uh, you know, yeah, he has some games like Luigi's Mansion, which is great, but but for the most part, you have to be the second player to play as Luigi, especially in games like you know, Super Mario Brothers 2 for the NES. I love that game because playing as Luigi, you can jump high, whatnot, he's got really unique controls uh, for that, and you can actually play with, as him playing single player, which is awesome. For sure, Mega Man, but not just any of the Mega Mans. I love all the Mega Mans, but on my childhood, I played mainly Mega Man X, and just Everything about Mega Man X, I loved it. Some of the characters I'm attached to aren't necessarily the ones most people get attached to. It's not usually the big characters I like. Like in Mario 2, I like the shy guys. Um, I like I like Diddy Kong better than I like Donkey Kong. I like that he's fun and he's and he's hyper and he's fast. It reminds me a lot of me. Another character I really like is Donkey Kong. Not only in the arcade, but I really like Donkey Kong playing as a, in, during the Duck Kong Country trilogy uh, in the mid 90s. I love Donkey Kong, Diddy Kong, Dixie Kong. All those are great. Mario Kart, well, Super Mario Kart was 
freaking awesome. All the characters are awesome. My, my personal favorite, Toad. I think the only one that blew was Koopa Troopa. Who the heck would want to be Koopa Troopa? And my favorite character in the Mario Karts is Koopa Troopa. <laughs> I don't know why, I always thought he was like the coolest character. He seemed like he was tough, but he was also a little kiddish, so he was a good medium. I also like Xamas for on the Metroid series. Um, it's cool because playing Metroid, the original Metroid on the NES, you didn't re realize that she was a female until you beat the game. And then there was that special thing you could do where she could play with her without the, the suit on, which is pretty cool, that secret. But uh, yeah, I think it was cool to have a female protagonist, especially early on in video games. A lot of female gamers, I'm sure, appreciate that. But that was pretty cool as well. Ryu. Actually, I always said Ryu as a kid, but I always wanted to be Ryu. Who didn't? Come on. If you're, unless maybe you're blonde, then you want to be Ken. Tough. You know, when you go like retro retro, I really like the ColecoVision because it's the first system I played. It's got a lot of nostalgia value to me. I love the Super Nintendo. NES is certainly close to that as well. Uh, some great games. Uh, a lot of unique games for both systems. Genesis is great because the processing power is a lot more fast than the Super Nintendo. I remember playing Sonic the Hedgehog, being blown away at how fast that was. I really wanted Dreamcast, Nintendo, original, and N64 because I love those. But there was one that was above all, and that was the Super Nintendo. I had my Mega Man X, Super Metroid, Turtles in Time, uh, Contra 3. I mean, the list is endless. I have a story behind me right here. It's the story of a system that took the world by storm back in 1985 in North America. You know, the story right back there. And it's it's not all the way written, you know. It's, it's only about half of the library here so you know but I, I still look at it that way and people ask me all the time why do you buy bad games you know you're you're an obsessive collector you're buying the bad stuff why, why don't you just buy games that you want to play I want to play the bad games as well because they are part of history good bad ugly they're all part of that history of video games it was Super Mario World being played in F-Zero and I always remember trying to get on you know to, to get and play them but everyone was surrounding it, there were hordes of kids and that you know, trying to play this new console and that was a really exciting time and of course uh, several years actually more like 15 years later got the chance to actually buy myself one uh, which I purchased off of eBay and that is definitely the best thing I've ever bought and now that was bringing that brought back some amazing memories. My favorite consoles are definitely 16-bit consoles, so I love the Genesis. I, of course, love the Super Nintendo, but a new personal favorite is this little guy here, the little TurboGrafx-16. Isn't it so wonderful? And look at the little games. They're so cute. Some of my favorite systems would be the Sega Master System. That's one I grew up a lot playing because we were generations behind, and also the Atari. I played that a lot. Um, especially for me being in my 20s, I know a lot of people probably didn't play that. Um, the Game Boy. The Game Boy, I played back in our Ford Aerostar all the time, in the van. I was playing in the back, and I remember my brother Dave always asking to play, and I said no, because they never let me play Nintendo games. And that's maybe why I comp overcompensated with the arcade now. They come over once in a while, and they want to play, and I pretty much say no, watch me play some of these games. There's so many great games and there's so many great systems, it's hard to pinpoint. When you get later on in the retro, you know, Dreamcast, N64 come to mind. It's because the 16-bit era, I feel kind of like every genre was at its height. The RPGs are some of the best RPGs ever. The shoot-'em-ups are some of the best shoot-'em-ups ever. The platformers, some of the best platformers ever. 16-bit games and systems are always, in my opinion, the best. As an adult, I'm really enjoying collecting all the different consoles that I saw as a kid, and even some that I didn't, like the 3DO. And lately I've been getting into the Commodore 64, which is really fun. But the, the systems I go to the most are probably the Atari 2600 wood grain and the original Nintendo. What's it like to play the Nintendo Entertainment System? My brothers nowadays know and we can talk about the NES for hours. I love the I love the difficulty. I love the whole 8-bit thing. I love Everything about it, it's really where I started gaming. It's where I think I learned when I first put in a Mario game. I think it taught me how to be a side-scroller. I remember it was the first game I ever played where it wasn't one screen. It's where the screen would keep going and keep going and keep going. And you're like, wow, there's new things coming at me every minute.
What's funny about retro is I don't even exactly know how to define it, except I think for every person it's a little bit different, and it's probably those games that you played in that certain age between 5 and 15. For me, it really is, in my opinion, what you, what you grew up playing, what you played when you were young. I know the Xbox 360 will probably be retro for some people that are, you know, just starting out to play games right now as, as a kid. So for me, that's Nintendo and Super Nintendo. But for some kids out there, it's like Xbox. It just depends on what you consider, I think, in your heart, really. How you feel about a system, if you have nostalgia towards it, I feel like that kind of puts a label on it as retro. For me, it was really great when we got to go to the arcades, though, because that kind of brought us together. With the consoles, you know, you didn't have a lot of three-player games, and we didn't even have a multi-tap anyway. But at the arcade, I could jump on Turtles in Time with my brothers, and we could all play at the same time. There were so many companies making video games back then, and uh, I just like tucking into them and, you know, immersing yourself in something new and uh, challenging. And a lot of these games were challenging, very hard, back then. <laughs> I just wish that more current developers would do throwbacks to 16-bit style games and try to mimic the sound, mimic the style and the graphical presentation of it. I just love that era and I wish there was more of it. I think the main reason that I really go back to retro every day is that when you put in a game, you're a kid again. You're, you're back in your pajamas, you're eating cereal, your, cereal at your house, uh, one foot away from the screen just staring at a video game, trying to convince your mom just for a few more minutes to play. It was a time when you didn't care about politics, you didn't care about the things in this world that are so wrong, everything, the only thing that mattered to you was saving the princess, you know, killing Dr. Robotnik. It was just a simpler time where there wasn't all this fighting and even if there was problems in your house or in the world, it didn't matter to you. You put in a system and you were enthralled and you were just put into that game at that moment. And I think there's nothing more that I enjoy more than just watching my kid play the games that I did when I was a kid. He doesn't know that the graphics aren't good. He doesn't know that the sound isn't good. It's really cool to sit there and just look at the wonders in his eyes. He's staring at Mario, jumping over the first Goomba. Actually, today he did that. And he jumped over the first Goomba and he literally looked back at me. He's three years old and he's like, Dad, I did it! With this excitement in his eyes. And to me, as a father, as a retro gamer especially, it was it's something really special. So you grow up in that environment and sometimes you hang on to it. Well, and sometimes you don't. Sometimes you grow up, quote unquote. Sometimes you don't. I've never grown up. I've. I will always be a retro gamer. I, I'll always be a gamer. Period. But retro games will always hold a special place in my heart. I, I play newer games, but it, it's it's. I think the simplicity of the older stuff and the nostalgia. I mean, the nostalgia will always be there for me. In the end, I think for most of us, it's really nostalgia that drives us to play these games. And although I may not be able to put an exact finger on it, but for the reasons I named, you know where to find me. <laughs> Jesus. Just sit here for the rest. <laughs> and for those white folks. And then she went to a bathing suit, and every kid is like, oh my god, enter the code! We're gonna see her in a bathing suit! It's a me, Mario! It's a me, Mario! Mario? It's a me, Mario! But for some kids out there, it's like. Xbox One. No, that's new. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> that I like that. That sucks. I hope that's enough. I hope that's good enough. I hope that doesn't suck, but it probably sucks. But if it does suck, let me know and I will make it unsuck. I'll try to make it unsuck. I don't know if I can make it unsuck, but I will try to make it unsuck.